Hey guys, Bub here, and in this video we're taking a look at Tiny11 24H2. Now Tiny11 24H2 is not actually an official release by NTDev, as if you recall NTDev currently employs a script where anyone can upload their own version of Windows 11 and have it be, quote, tinied, I don't even know what the official word is for that, uh, to make it smaller, because distributing Windows ISOs is technically against Microsoft's terms of services. So NTDev obviously released a script that says, hey, you can make the ISOs yourself. But this specific person right here, it appears they've decided to upload this, actually this person right here, Mesa 3 d has uploaded this Tiny11-24H2 ISO for us to take a look at. Again, unofficial update that is imported, 24H2, that specific build number, um, several changes compared to the original. Uh, fully tested, updated, with little no issues. It's fully serviceable. .NET 3.5 is shipped, um, and IoT LTSC is used as the addition because Pro is impossible to ship with the hardware requirements, blah, 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 blah. So, that's pretty cool. Here are the requirements. We do not need TPM 2.0 or Secure Boot. At least 2 gigs of RAM, I think I gave it 2 gigs, and 14 gig of drive space. That is not very good compared to what we typically see with Tiny11, but let's take a look at this ISO. All right, and here we are. And this is obviously the 24H2 installer because this is the new theme. I actually really do like this with the blue background compared to the old purple and this up-to-date window. Um, it does look pretty good. So I'm glad they decided to update that. And that was a Microsoft thing, not an NT dev thing. But here we are. We are now installing Tiny11 and look at how fast that's going. Well, it was going fast, probably because there should be very little this ISO has to actually install. All of that bloatware stripped right out of Windows 11. All right, and here we are. One thing that if you've watched this channel before that you know that I like about Tiny11 builds is that they always include the out-of-box experience. I really dislike when custom ISOs take the out-of-box experience out and they leave that kind of install script that instantly brings you into a pre-made user. I don't like that because it feels like... Well, I mean, anything could really be in this ISO too, but not going through the out-of-box experience gives me less feeling of security. Now, again, as many have commented in my last video, please do not use a custom Windows ISO ever. Now, if I had to trust someone, I would trust NTDev and his script because that way you know, you can actually look at the script and see what the script is doing to your ISO and you can know where your ISO is coming from. So like you would download an official ISO from Microsoft, run it through the script, call it a day. That's pretty transparent. But when you're downloading something from archive.org or like Mediafire or Google Drive, you always have to be a little wary of what you're downloading because you never know what they could put in there. And if you went to use one of these ISOs as your daily driver and you sign into something, you could very easily get hacked. And obviously that poses a lot of problems for you and your identity. So for my recommendation, obviously you would never want to use one of these as your actual operating system or put any level of data into these ISOs because you never know what they could be taking back. So now we're going to go ahead and enter a username, so we'll just go Tiny11. Uh, we're going to skip the password for now, because who needs a password, even though we just had a lecture about security. And now we're going to check for Windows updates. Again, a big thing with the newer versions of Windows 11, or Tiny11 rather, is the updates and the ability to have your OS be serviced by Microsoft. Um, previous builds of Tiny11 did not allow you to do Windows updates, because they would simply either not work or they would break the OS. Um, now there's a big push for serviceability. So they're now able to download Windows updates and usually not break the OS. All right, and here we are inside of Tiny11-24H2. And now the first thing is I really do like this background, but I don't believe this is made by the developers or NT Dev. I think this is just a product of us using 24H2 IoT because I know Windows Server has a similar background, or Server 2025 rather. Um, by default on the desktop, we have our cycle bin, and that is it, which I love to see. In the taskbar, we of course have our action center as well as our control center. Um, again, the 24H2, so we have that scrolling menu there, no edit button. And then we have our system tray with VMware tools, Windows Defender installed. I always love to see Windows Defender because at least there's some sort of EDR on the device. Um, USB, safely remove hardware, as well as Bluetooth. Pinned to the taskbar, we have our file explorer. We then have our overview, I don't even remember what that's called, our search, and our start menu, and that is it. There's no widgets, there's none of that other stuff. I mean, literally, widgets has gone out of here. We can't even bring it back, which is a good thing. I don't know one person who actually uses widgets. Every time someone uses it, it's accidental. They go over to click the start menu or where it used to be, and then they bring up widgets. 
In the start menu, by default, we have two things pinned. We have settings and file explorer, and under recommended, we have getting started. I have asked in one of my previous videos about getting started and why many OSs still include it, and apparently getting started is like really hard to get rid of in Windows 11. Like somehow it's baked into the core of Windows 11, which is really stupid. Um, going to all apps, we can see that this truly is a very minimal OS. We have our accessibility apps, we have a calculator, but not just any calculator the original system calculator from like Windows 7, not even a Windows 11 based calculator. Then we have File Explorer, Getting Started, Microsoft Store, so that's good, you can at least download something. Uh, Notepad, Paint, System Settings, Snipping Tool, Windows Backup, Windows Security, and Windows Tools. One thing I noticed is that we do not actually have a web browser, which is something that, you know, I, I do kind of wish some tiny ISOs still included Microsoft Edge, that way you had at least some way to get out to the internet. Um, but hey, to each their own. Let's actually come here and take a look at our system settings, or not system settings, but like our disk usage, uh, CPU usage. So we're using 8% of our CPU, 4%, you know, typical Windows in that range, uh, 1.5 out of 2 gigabytes of RAM that we allocated to this VM. And then as for disk usage, we have a 60 gig drive, and we are using about 20 gigs, just a little less than 20 gigs. So not great, but not terrible. I mean, we've definitely seen other Tiny11 builds get smaller than that. Um, and one thing I did notice just off the bat, this file explorer is not the 24H2 file explorer. This is like a Windows 10 style file explorer, uh, taking back the Windows 11 theme. It's not there. Um, last thing I wanted to take a look at is the version. And we can see this is Windows 11 IoT Enterprise LTSC. Pretty cool. So that being said, this is a brief overview of Tiny11 24H2. We have a past of taking a look at these builds on this channel, and I'm glad that we got to take a look at yet another one. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and drop a like if you're new around here, as you do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.